everyone on this special day. We are filled with joy as this is the first day that we're worshiping in person since the last lockdown, and especially here at St. Paul's, where we have not worshiped in person since the end of Advent. And we welcome those who are here today, and we welcome those who are worshiping from home. All those who are watching are part of this congregation, and to mark this moment, we have a poster, and if somebody can just grab it at the back table for me, and we can, I forgot to bring that up. We have this wonderful poster, and it will be placed at the church. I'll laminate it a little bit uh, later on. But these are all the people. There's some pictures, and the rest are names of people that are now part of this congregation, ones that have always been and ones that have just started joining us online. And if your name is not on there, please let me know and I'll find us, I'll put it, put it, put it on as well. And, um, and some of you may want to add your names because you're joining us for the first time for worship. And if for those just joining for the first time, I'm Reverend Fraser Williamson, the minister here at St. Paul's United Church in Golden Valley and St. Andrew's United Church in Port Loring. We are now worshiping in person and recording the service for people at home. We're still following the COVID protocols that were in place the last time we worshiped in person. There will be no singing and no congregational responses for at least the month of July, and we'll see how protocols change for August. And, um, and as there's no singing and congregational response, we have a designator reader responder. And this week it's Bud Whitmo. And um, I was able to, uh, Bud and I got our second vaccine roughly about the same time. So I saw him there and asked him to, uh, to help me today. So thank you very much for accepting, Bud. And we give thanks for the wonderful music provided by Christopher Moore. And we also give thanks to those who have done the pre-recorded pieces that we'll show on the, um, on the video. And uh, those singers are and players of music are Christopher Moore, Nate Lee, Ken Crozier, Gloria Kidd, Paul Robbins, myself, and Reverend Sandra Jenkinson and new to the singing group, um, Claire Teismeyer and Reverend Teist Teismeyer. And um, as we gather now in person and online, with the help of technology, we give thanks for the Holy Spirit, which moves beyond time and space and joins us together as the body of Christ. I invite you I invite you, if you're at home, you can sing, but uh, Bud and I can sing the, uh, the first uh, hymn, which we've been doing through this journey with the, uh, the story of David. It's on this path. More voices, number eight.
As we begin a new moment in our journey together, let us light the Christ candle. Yeah, or you can come up here. As we light this Christ candle, we light a symbol of the presence of Jesus with us individually and as a worldwide community of faith. As we light this candle, we acknowledge, or we acknowledge it as guiding us to Jesus' vision of the kingdom of God. Do you want to read the last little part of the kingdom? I guess I missed that. Part. Yeah. Sorry, what part? You start at the kingdom. That read the, well, the kingdom I'm of going. God that is our call and the framework of our discipleship. Thank you. And now for our call to worship. How great is God, joy of all the earth. We notice with our own being, it is God who makes us secure. The love of God spreads peace in our hearts and throughout the world. Where there is justice, there God is. Walk throughout the world. Make the rounds of all the marvels. Note the evidence of goodness. So that we can tell future generations that God will guide us forever. Come, let us worship God in joy. And now our next hymn is, I have called you by your name. That's in more voices, 161. confess our sins to God, whose power is made perfect in our weakness. Let us pray the prayer of confession. Right. God, we are your people, yet too often, as we in the Christian faith have not witnessed to the grace you share with us, we have judged others in your name because we do not care for them. We found excuses to reject those who were not like us by declaring wrongly that they were not like you. God, forgive us and open our hearts to your grace, so we may love others as you love all of us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God's grace and mercy are never ending. Your sins are forgiven, therefore be at peace. You gave Zion a stronghold for David. By the power of the Holy Spirit, speak to us through Jesus Christ, your living word, 
in whose name we pray. Amen. Anyway, it's nice to be back here in person again. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul, Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a convent with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the millow inwards, and David became greater and greater for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. Last week, if you're watching online, we reflected on the funeral hymn that David sang. When we heard of the death of Saul, and that's why, and as well as Jonathan, that was the funeral hymn. We learned at that point that David became king. And this scripture that Bud just read covers one more step on David's journey to greatness. The focus of this week's scripture was when he was anointed king of all of Israel. But before we focus on this new step, we must address the steps that took place from the time of Saul's death until the time that our scripture took selection took place. When Saul died, David was given Saul's crown. That crown was for the kingdom of Judah. And the rest of Israel that was to the north did not have a king after the death of Saul. But after five years, Saul's only remaining son, Ishbel, was king of the rest of the tribes of Israel. So Israel was divided between Judah in the south and the rest of the Israel in the north. And during this time, there were several battles between the north and the south. Ishbel ruled for two years, but he was only king in name. Most of the kingly duties were handled by one of his officials who was named Abner, who near the end of Ishbel's reign switched his loyalty to David and was eventually killed. When Abner left Ishbel, Ishbel declared that he was powerless. It was during that time that many people in the north desired that David be their king as well. A few of Ishbel's military officers decided to take things into their own hands. They killed Ishbel and brought his head to David. David was not impressed. David was not impressed because they had killed God's anointed leader. And because of this, David had those two individuals killed. And David had Ishbel's head buried in honor. It is at this point we reach the important step in David's journey. As the beginning of this scripture selection says, then all the tribes of Israel came to David of Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time while Saul was king over us, it was you who led Israel out and brought it in. The Lord said to you, it is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed him king over all of Israel. 
After seven years of wars and fighting, this was a significant step in the history of Israel. And it was a, a significant step in the greatness of David. It is a happy ever after ending. And our scripture selection jumps to verse 9 and 10 where it says, David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the millow inwards, and David became greater and greater. For the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. But we're missing another step in David's journey. For many years, biblical scholars and preachers have always skipped verses 6 to 8 when speaking of great David's greatness. This skeptic Step, this step was skipped, was, it was skipped because it was not that great. David, upon taking the throne of the United Israel, felt it was important to choose a neutral capital. And Jerusalem was the wise choice, as geographically it was in neutral territory between the north and the south. But the reason it was neutral was that it was the stronghold and the home of the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land. The Jebusites were confident and said, even the blind and lame will turn you back. They said this as like Goliath was confident that he would win against Israel and that they would also win the battle. But David still took Jerusalem and the term blind and lame was used as a derogatory term for those who opposed David. What is interesting to note is that some translations of the renaming of Israel state that instead of it being renamed the city of David, it was renamed the city of peace. Jerusalem became the city of peace and came that way at the cost of the Jebusites. Those who were against David were labeled blind and lame, and they were not accepted and put away. Now that we've heard about this less desirable step in David's journey, we know that David became great, but we also know of times that he was not great. But in both the times that he was great and the times that he was not, God was present with him on his journey. God was present with him in the bad and the good. And we will look into future weeks at times in which David's greatness did not show. But in both the great times and the not so great times, God was with David, and God still loved David. God also loved the Jebusites whom David conquered to build this political stronghold. God continued to love people, all the people, in good times and bad. And in David's descendants, there were a lot of bad things going on. But God's love was present to the people through history, whether they recognized it or not. God continued to show love to the people by sending Jesus, who in love was sent to the world to share God's love. And this love was so great, Jesus took it to the cross and died. And this love was so great, it defeated death when Jesus walked out of the tomb that first Easter morning. We feel this great love today as God's love is with us through the Holy Spirit. Many speak of the greatness of this love, and we have strived as a faith to share this love with everyone that we have met. Like David and the United Israel, we as settlers entered into this neutral territory with the mission of sharing this love. This neutral territory 
is what we now call Canada. And throughout our childhoods, we have been told, like the people of Israel, how great Canada is. We have celebrated it on July 1st every year, and on that day we celebrate our greatness. We celebrate the love we have for our country and the love we have for each other. But like verses 6 to 8 in chapter 5 of the second book of Samuel, a dark part of our history had been skipped over. It was, and it was erased as it was not a great moment in our history. And I can say with an honors degree in history that through my whole education, I did not learn about residential schools until I became more involved in the wider church in the United Church of Canada. The reason why this step of the journey was omitted was that when we built these schools, we thought that in love we were helping those people. The goal was to share God's love with them. In not mentioning this in history books, we were maintaining our greatness. It is with the omission of our history that as a country, we are celebrated as being a great country. Now that the graves have been discovered and the history that, they, that had previously been hidden is now revealed, we have one more step on our journey. Acknowledging the past is one step towards reconciliation. Our next step is reconciliation and God will be with us as we make that step. God will be with all of us as we face our history. Once this is completed, we, like David, will be known as great again. Like David, all of us have had good times and bad times in our past. There are times when our greatness and love are shown to the world and there are times when they do not. But as the end of this scripture states, God is with us in both the bad and the good. God loves us, and God forgives us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
after, and the ones that are online will see this. Um, we did something quite interesting. There's four singers here. There's Claire and Tice and Sandra and I, and each one of us did one verse solo. So it was a nice arrangement, right, Christopher? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so look forward to that. So, and yes, uh, some of us have been offering our voices, but it is also time for the offering, and um, and these offerings are set to God. And for those of you who are worshiping in person, you can leave your offerings in the plate at the back. And for those who are worshiping with us online, offerings can be made using PAR, which is pre-authorized remittance, checks or envelopes dropped off to the local treasurer, and even through Canada Helps. So thank you for finding a way to give that works for you. Your offerings make a difference not only in sustaining the ministry and mission of the whole church, but also enabling each other to reach out in response to needs in the local com and community uh, and beyond through the work of the United Church's Mission and Service Fund. We know that throughout this past year, you have continued to faithfully give your offerings to your local church, and we thank you for doing so. And if you're just beginning to worship with us, and wish to make a donation to any of our churches, all of the addresses are provided at the end of the service. Let us take a moment now to bless all the offerings given over the last week. And if you'd like to dance and move your hands to this peppy version of this hymn, you're welcome to do so. and work of the church. Uh, we have St. Paul's Ladies Coffee at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Please contact me if you'd like to get the link. And we will be, tr I've been working to train Connie and to uh, be the host for the weeks that I'm away. So, and she's sort of laughing at me right now. I can see through the masks. So well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, yes. And uh, I'm also, uh, I was able to meet Bud to get, uh, become the designated reader uh, for the month of July. So I do have the sheets at the back. And if you look, it's on the top, it'll say where the recording is. I know some people don't like to be recorded. So if you want to volunteer to read on a week that isn't, just look and where it says St. Andrew's on the top, you can sign up <laughs> to read that day. And um, so we had that, and I actually even stuck the ones for August there. I was able to finish that since I wrote this. And a couple of summers ago, we were speaking of uh, Tice Teismeyer, who was part of the singing this in this service. He released his book, Road to Holiness, based on the Gospel of John. And well, this year, he's re also released a study guide to his book. 
which helps you reflect on your journey. And that book actually speaks of his journey. And he will be bringing copies of the study guide up, and they actually are here. Um, and if you'd like to get a copy of either book, please let me know. Uh, the, uh, the Road to Holiness is $20, and the study guide is $15. And I will be away from July 26 to August Second, and Cheryl Longstaff will be leading the service on August 1st. For emergency pastoral care, please listen carefully um, during this week, that particular week, it'll be Reverend Kathleen McCallum. But if she's not available, Carol Dobbs is available just for that week right there. And then I will be away again from August 16th to 29th. And um, on Sunday, August 22nd, we have a very special guest leading the service. It is Reverend Ann Dionosio. Now, you probably won't know from the name Dionosio who she is, but you may know who she is. Um, her father is Reverend Doug Lauks, and Ann and I uh, started Emmanuel College at the same time. We've had a lot of classes together, and she now lives in South River, so she's, um, she is so excited to be coming here, because when her dad was here, she remembers living in the mats for the summer. And on August 29th, there will be a special lay-led service and everything is ready. I just need volunteers for that. So if you're interested in reading or doing a part, or even there's a full sermon that somebody can read, um, please let me know. And during that period of way, those two weeks where I'm away, Reverend Kathleen McCallum will be available for emergency pastoral care. And for those watching you at home, and Connie's watching my counts of subscribers, She's, she's watching it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on that red subscribe button. And it will be, um, and you can do that after finishing the service. And the more, um, the more subscribers we have, the more things we can do with YouTube and the more people we can reach. And now we have, um, gonna have Bud come up with our minute for mission. Minute for Mission. On June 6, not far from the oldest mosque in London, Ontario, a family of five out for a walk were deliberately run over by a truck. Three adults and one teenager were killed. A nine-year-old boy is the sole survivor. Police say the family was targeted because they are Muslim. In a statement, the United Church of Canada condemned the horrific and hate-filled attack. Many people in the United Church are weeping alongside the extended families and friends of the family members who were killed and injured in this premeditated hate crime and are grieving the innocent lives lost in this abhorrent attack, the statement reads, acknowledging the fearfulness that some people in the Muslim community feel as a result. Did you know that 322 anti-Muslim hate crimes were reported in Canada between 2013 and 2019? And that's just the crimes we know about. Prejudice runs deep. A 2017 study published by the Angus Reid Institute states that almost half of all Canadians have an unfavorable view of Islam, a perception evident in attitudes toward religious clothing. While 88% of Canadians support a nun wearing a habit, just 32% approve of a person wearing a hijab. Our United Church is deeply committed to working with Muslims and others for peace and justice. That's why your mission and services gifts help us as a church to develop statements and educational resources to combat prejudice and discrimination. In 2006, for example, the church released the statement that we may know each other, United Church Muslim Relations Today. It was preceded by an important study document with the same name designed to help church communities deepen loving relationships with their faith cousins. Similar studies guided 
Similar study guides have been created to foster interfaith relationships, including Jewish and Hindu faith, respectively bearing faithful witness and honoring the divine in each other. Education began, begins with us. Your mission and service gifts help raise awareness and understanding that in turn contributes to a more peaceful world, one where no one is harmed by the hatred of another, where no more children have to grow up without their family. In the words of our current moderator, Richard Bott, let us use all that we have and all that we are to stand in the face of evil that would allow and cause this crime of hatred. Even as one man has been arrested for his actions, let us uncover and work against the beliefs, the worldview, the racism, and the hatred that supported his choice. Amen. Your gifts throw through mission and service help raise awareness and understanding that in turn contributes to a more peaceful world. Thank you. And now let's take a moment for prayer. Ever present God, we give you thanks that you walk this path with us. We give you thanks for your patience and your love, and most importantly, your forgiveness. We also give thanks that you're with those who are oppressed and those who are afraid to speak up. We ask that your love and justice show during this unprecedented time. As we continue on this path, we ask that you give us the tools of compassion and understanding, which is needed in making reconciliation with our Indigenous peoples. We also continue to pray for the families of those who are missing as a result of the building collapse in Florida. We pray for the people in British Columbia, especially Lytton, who have had their lives altered because of the wildfires. We pray for the family and friends of those who died in a house fire in Alberta. As we begin the tourist season in the summer, we pray for safe travels for all those that are on the roads. We pray for those who are working hard to end this pandemic by getting vaccines and administering vaccines. We pray for all the businesses that have been affected by this pandemic, and we pray that they will have a pr prosperous reopening. We pray for our church family, which has grown over the last year. We pray that your message of love, justice, and forgiveness continue to be shared throughout the world. And now we pray silently those persons or concerns we wish to declare to you. We gather all these prayers into one as we pray the prayer of your Son, Jesus, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we continue on this path, as we continue with the work of reconciliation, as we continue to share the good news, 
Know that whatever challenges you face, God is with you every step of the way. As you step out into the world, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.